I'm working in this sample book that someone sent me at some point. It's square, which works well with the dollars, and it's a fairly stiff paper. Not great for watercolor, but you can see that I have done a lot of the dollars in it. Um, so as long as I don't get too wet, it should be okay. Now I'm going to do an example for you of taking one object and using just that one object without changing views of it, bending that one object to work along all the swooping lines. One version of it. Unlike the fountain pen where I had several copies of the fountain pen looking at it this way and that way and the other way, I'll be looking at the item in different ways but I'm going to only have one version of the item. A tree would work really well for that because a tree could come up and then all the branches could go around, swoop around. The example of the um, ivy, I guess it was, that I showed in the class, that was when it all came down and all the leaves went out that way. The parsley, one plant of parsley that comes up and goes along all of the lines. This is gonna be a little different Unlike my usual way of working, I will be working from a photograph. First, my swooping line. Here's my circle, and there we go. That's going to be kind of complicated. Now, I don't know if you can see it well, so I will put a tracing paper over it and ink this so that I can have a version of this in the corner for you to see. And the photo that I'm going to use will be hardware on a door. I'll begin in real time and then I'll speed it up. I'm going to start off with the face. I think that's going to be the easiest thing for me to do. Just looking at shapes. I'm making closed shapes. There are a lot of little shapes in here. Now here's where I have to bend it to continue along these lines. So this is going to be different from, certainly from the parsley. And I'm going to take advantage of this being extended. Okay, so here this is the bottom of the big circle. So here's the top of the circle, but I'm going to bring this all the way around. And this one is going to actually take turn a corner. Because I'm having to bend it around that way, could have done something a little differently there, so I'm going to have to fake this. This meets up with that, but you'll find that you do have to change some things along the way because otherwise it's absolutely impossible. And when you flub up a line like that, you can just add some dimension. Adds to the worn look of it. This is the top 
part of the lock that's being bent around. just found from experience when I have so many lines like this that I like to do a double line for the border and I'm going to do it inside of this so that I don't so that I have this little edge we'll see if that works knocker. So that's it. Now I haven't done anything down here. Maybe I'll write dragon. So I've taken one piece of hardware and I've created shapes in this. And I may change them as I paint them in. I think just for the fun of it, I'm going to complete this line because I think it's kind of necessary. And Just going to add little circles there. They aren't there, but I'm going to add them. In fact, see, I need to break this up a little bit. I'm going to add them all the way up. So I don't really like that shape so much. It needs something else. I can play with color when I get to this part. And I might as well close this off too. Although I liked it better not closed off. I'm going to add that and I'll do it two different colors. Maybe two different values of the colors. See now that anchored that whereas it wasn't anchored before. If I play with the values right it might be able to compensate for that. Always learning something. This drives me just crazy. What I did was I, I broke up a flow and now I'm trying to recreate the flow. And I've got a little bit of it back, so I'll just see what happens. All right, so now it's like making holes through this. 